Uh, Mark, let's start with you. We've always known that music has been a big part of your life. Uh, why have you decided now is the time to flex that muscle? Um, I, you know, I, I think that, that if, if music, if you love music or anything in life, really, um, and, and you're really passionate about it, that kind, of, that kind of thing never really leaves you. So it wasn't a conscious decision to suddenly flex the muscle now mm -hmm. for me. It's just something that's happening at this stage of my life. I've always, you know, because I grew up in the church, so I've always gravitated towards musicals. I love music, grew up with lots of live music around me. And, and for me, um, it's just a cool thing to be able to... To, to write songs. I've always written songs. I've just never told uh, the world about it, but it's been something that I've always been doing. And now to be able to, to write for somebody like the amazing Vicky Sampson, I feel like I'm just the luckiest comedian in the world. Yeah, indeed. I mean, for somebody I mean, uh, uh, who comes from a different part of the entertainment industry, you start writing a song. I know. I'll just call Vicky Sampson and ask her to sing this song for me. Vicky Sampson, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, how did this all come about? Did you, did you get a WhatsApp from Mark saying, listen, I've written this song. Don't you want to see if you like it? How did it all happen? Well, literally, actually, that is exactly <laughs> what happened. Um, on a Saturday morning, uh, whilst I was um, twiddling my thumbs and wondering where the rest of my career and my life is going, <laughs> um, in the midst of fighting the battle for, um, on behalf of musicians as uh, president of TUMSA, the Trade Union for Musicians yeah. of South Africa, and just thinking, gee, I really don't know, you know, it looks like the only way I'm going to get back into this industry is with a song, and a really great song. And um, on that particular morning, I got the WhatsApp from Mark and saying, hey, this is a song I've just composed in December. Uh, will you have a listen? And um, the, the rest was history. I listened to the song and immediately identified with the lyric mm. and the melody and, and contacted him. And within a week, we were in a meeting. And within another week, we were actually in studio. So it was just an incredible process of, I don't believe anything happens by chance, you know, yeah. and I believe that it was our timing. And um, the song was obviously meant for me. So I'm very blessed and, and feel very honored and chuffed that Mark Lottering is as, as talented a person as he is. And we, our relationship goes back many, many years. Now, now, Vicky, just, just before we speak about the song some more, I mean, you alluded to that now in speaking about where you felt you were at in, in, um, uh, in the industry. It's been a very difficult time for so many South Africans, but especially those who make their living off the entertainment industry. We've got somebody like Mark who took to the world of virtual comedy, one of the first to do it and do it successfully. But it hasn't been that easy for people like you, singers who depend on performing live, and I know that's something that you adore doing as well. Uh, Give us a sense of what this last year and a half has been like, and if you think things are finally starting to turn around, is there a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel for our country's entertainers? Well, you know, I think it has been, uh, on many levels, I think COVID has taught us as, as a human race many, many invaluable lessons. And the first thing is to never get comfortable, never be in your comfort zone. And I think as an artist and a creative mark would uh, identify with this, this is a lesson that we've learned many, many years ago that you never get comfortable where you are because there's a great saying which I love is be careful of how you treat people when you're climbing up that ladder because you never know when you have to come down. The industry has tested us on so many levels with venues being closed down because that is the key and the core of why we do what we do to reach our public on a personal level with live performances, you know what the status quo is. Um, the venues have all been cut to like 50% uh, capacity. Um, the virtual online streaming thing went great for a little while and then that kind of the novelty is worn off. Mm. Um, we know as TUMSA, as the trade union, we have over 2,200 members nationally, including some of the greatest artists in this country who have literally been having to think out of the box. Some of them have had to sell equipment. Many of them have lost their homes. Many of them have actually been uh, contemplating suicide. Some of them have mm. taken their own lives. Um, we have been, as, as a trade union, we've been in negotiations with the Department of Arts and Culture, specifically for the COVID, uh, first wave of COVID relief, to try and get some, uh, um, you know, some relief for our members. But the challenge goes on now, and I think that one thing that, that we do realize is that the whole world is open up. 
for us. So I think to a certain degree, as hard as it is for us not to have our live audiences mm -hmm. so accessible at this moment in time, the great thing about it is that it is that when we do, it's going to open up the whole world yeah. to us virtually as it has done. Well, that's a great way of looking at it. Mark, if I could bring you in here, the theme of the song, This Isn't Enough, is, is a rather dark theme. It's about a toxic relationship. Tell us about the inspiration for the song. Firstly, I want to say everything's fine at home with Anwar and I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, you didn't take inspiration from your home setup, is what you're saying. I didn't take inspiration from what's going on here. Um, you know, um, most songs in the world, or many songs in the world, are about love. And um, and then it's, it's either about love or about heartbreak, um, because that's just the way we live. So... Um, so this is, this is a song, and, and depending on how you view the song, it's going to be very interesting to see um, how South Africans respond to the song, because it can also be empowering. It's about mm. somebody who's in, who's in a relationship. Um, she, the relationship is destructive, it's toxic, um, and she, what she does know for the fact is that she needs to leave. She needs to get out of this relationship. And that is um, a fact for so many people. It's an mm. issue in our country. Um, as well, and when I started writing this song, I didn't think I'm going to write a song, um, you know, to address a particular issue. I was simply um, just addressing life, and my approach was was pretty much the same approach that I use when I'm being creative, when I'm writing yeah. a story, when I'm working on the musicals, and that's how the song came about. That and the glass of Southern New Ground. You know, I, I'm then, sure, I'm sure, a glass of white went a long way. Just very quickly before I let you go, though, uh, my colleague Gareth made the point when we listened to the beginning of that song. Within the opening few notes, you just know that that is Vicky Sampson. I mean, I, I realize now it was over 25 years, it's about 25 years since my Africa dream just took over the world. And sh the, 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 uh, the lungs on her still, uh, still has it, doesn't it, Mark? Absolutely. And, and people can get to see the full song um, tonight in, in our show at half past seven. It's called Loitering at the City Hall. You can get your ticket on Cricket. So if you want to see Vicky Sampson, and be blown away by her performing the entire song. Um, you can catch our show online tonight as well. Vicky has just been absolutely amazing.